Hi guys, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. So we already covered the basic topics in the previous lessons, and this is part 4. If you're new to the channel, go ahead, pause this video, and check out those earlier parts first. Cool. Now let's get into today's topic, filtering with grep. So, very often when you're using the terminal, you might want to search for a specific keyword in the output, like something you're trying to find in a long list. For that, we use a command called grep. Now, grep is basically a filter. It lets you search through the output of a command and only shows the lines that match your keyword. Let me give you an example using the ps command. So, psox shows all the processes running on the system, everything that's active right now. But what if we don't want everything? What if we're just trying to see if Apache 2 is running? Here's where grep comes in. You can use this. PSOOC pipe grep Apache 2. So what's happening here? This symbol, that's called a pipe, takes the output of the first command, PSOOC, and sends it into the second command, grep Apache 2. Then grep filters through all that and just shows you lines that have the word Apache 2 in them. That way, instead of reading through hundreds of lines, you get just the few lines you actually care about. Saves you time and your eyesight. Alright guys, let's move on to the next topic, modifying files and directories. So once you've found your files and directories, you'll want to be able to perform actions on them. In this part, we'll look at how to create files and directories, copy files, rename files, and delete files and directories. Now, there are many ways to create files in Linux, but for now, we'll just look at two simple methods. The first one is CAT, which stands for concatenate. That just means to combine pieces together. It's not about your favorite pet cat or anything like that. The cat command is generally used for displaying the contents of a file, but it can also be used to create small files. For creating bigger files, it's better to enter the code in a text editor like Vim, Emacs, Leafpad, Jedit, or Kate, and then save it as a file. Alright, let's talk about concatenation with cat. Now usually, cat is used for reading or displaying the content of a file, but we can also use it to make new files, add more text to a file, or even replace the whole content with something else. In step 1, we're going to create a new file using the cat command. In the terminal, type the word cat followed by the greater than symbol, and then the name of the file you want to create. For example, cat greater than hacking skills dot txt. Now, after you press enter, the terminal will seem like it's waiting. That means you're in interactive mode. This is where you type the content of the file. So now type this sentence. Hacking is the most valuable skill set of the 21st century. When you're done typing, press Ctrl and the letter D at the same time to save the file and exit. Now, if you want to see what's inside the file, you can simply type cathackingskills.txt and you will see. Hacking is the most valuable skill set of the 21st century. In step 2, we're going to add more text to the same file without deleting what's already there. To do this, type the word cat, followed by two greater than symbols and then the name of your file. Like this, cat double greater than hacking skills dot txt major. Again, you're back in interactive mode. Now type another sentence like, everyone should learn hacking, then press Ctrl and D again to save and close it. Now when you type cat hacking skills dot txt, you'll see both sentences together. Hacking is the most valuable skill set of the 21st century. Everyone should learn hacking. In step 3, we're going to replace everything inside the file with something new. So this time type cat greater than hacking skills dot txt and type this sentence. Everyone in IT security without hacking skills is in the dark. Press Ctrl and D again. Now when you check the file by typing cat hacking skills dot txt, You'll only see this line. Everyone in IT security without hacking skills is in the dark, and that means the older text has been deleted and replaced with the new one. So, just to quickly review, use cat with one greater than symbol to create a new file, use cat with two greater than symbols to add to an existing file, use cat with one greater than symbol again if you want to erase the file and replace it with something new. And always remember, to finish typing and save your changes, press Ctrl and D. That's it for using the cat command to manage your files directly from the terminal. Let's learn how to create files and directories using two simple commands. Touch and make directory. File creation with touch. First, let's talk about the touch command. Touch was originally made so a user could update a file's details, like when it was last modified. But if the file does not exist yet, touch will create a new empty file for you. For example, to create a new file called new file, Type this command in the terminal. Touch new file. After you press enter, the file new file will be created. To check, you can list the files in the directory by typing ls-l, 
This will show a long list of files, and you should see new file listed with a size of zero, meaning it has no content yet. Creating a directory. Next, let's create a directory, which is like a folder. The command to make a new directory is mkdir, which stands for make directory. To create a directory named new directory, type mkdir new directory. Now to move into this new directory, type cd new directory. This command changes your current location to the new directory folder you just created. That's it. Now you know how to create empty files with touch and folders with mkdir and how to move into those folders using cd. Copying a file. Now let's talk about how to copy a file. To copy files, we use the cp command. This command creates a duplicate of the file in a new location and leaves the original file where it is. In this example, we'll first create a file called old file in the root directory using the touch command touch old file. Then we copy it to another directory, for example, slash root slash new directory and rename it during the process. Here's how cp old file slash root slash new directory slash new file. As you can see, we renamed the file from old file to new file while copying it. Renaming the file is optional. If you don't want to rename it, just write the directory path without a new name at the end. The file will keep its original name. Now let's check if the file was copied. First, we move to the new directory, cd new directory. Then we list the contents of the folder, else. And now you should see new file inside that directory, which is a perfect copy of old file. Let's look at how to rename a file in Linux. Unfortunately, Linux doesn't have a command made only for renaming files, like Windows does, but we can use the mv command. This command is usually used to move files or directories, but it can also be used to rename them. So, to rename a file called new file to new file 2, just type mv new file new file 2. Then, when you type ls, you'll see new file 2 there and new file is gone because it's been renamed. This same method also works for renaming directories. Let's talk about how to remove a file in Linux. To remove a file, you can simply use the rm command. For example, to remove a file called new file 2, you would type rm space new file 2. After that, you can type ls l to do a long listing of the directory, and you'll see that new file 2 is gone. Removing a directory. The command for removing a directory is very similar to removing a file, but instead of just rm, you add dir to it. So the command becomes rmdir, for example, rmdir new directory. But here's the thing. If the directory is not empty, it won't let you remove it. You'll get a message saying something like, directory not empty. That's a safety feature so you don't delete something by mistake. If you really want to delete a directory and everything inside it, all the files and folders, then you can use the rm command with the dash r option, like this. rm dash r new directory. Just be very careful with this. If you use rm dash r in your home directory, for example, it could delete everything in there. So always double check before running this command. Now that you have some basic skills for navigating around the file system, you can play with your Linux system a bit before moving forward. The best way to become comfortable with using the terminal is to try out your new skills right now. In the next part, we'll go further and deeper into our hacker playground. Exercises Before you move on to chapter 2, try out the skills you learned from this chapter by completing the following exercises. 1. Use the ls command from the root directory to explore the directory structure of Linux. Move to each of the directories using the cd command and run pwd to check where you are in the file system. 2. Use the who am I command to check which user you are logged in as. 3. Use the locate command to find word lists that can be used for password cracking. 4. Use the cat command to create a new file and then add more content to that file. Just remember, the single arrow greater than is used to create or overwrite a file and the double arrow greater than greater than is used to add content to an existing file. 5. Create a new directory called hacker directory and inside it, create a new file called hacked file. Now copy that file to your root directory and rename it to secret file. 